That was an unusual formation. It's an unbalanced line. They take their left tackle. Take number 77, Bubba Paris, and put him over on the right side. Let's just see if we can see it. Here's Bubba Paris right here. This is the tight end here, the normal right tackle here. Now the Giants are just over here, so the 49ers run back to the other side. Third down at about four. 49ers at the Giants 30. Montana back to throw. The Giants in a quick start. Got the feet down in bounds. Picked up the first down and a gain of nine. Say it's Dwight Clark had his feet down in bounds, but Joe Montana had his feet up in the air. Where did he get hit on this play by George Martin? Just as he threw the ball. Here's Dwight Clark. You can see that the Giants are playing off. Kenny Daniel is deep. Clark just hits the out right in front of him. But watch right there as Montana throws that ball. George Martin's right in his face. Woo. Clark was awfully close not to getting those feet down in bounds. Montana to throw on first down again. Swings it out to Craig. Threw it under the arms of Curtis McGriff. Bill Sims still looking. That ball might have been deflected by McGriff. You know, we talked before about how how the, the 49ers were really the first ones in 1981 to block Lawrence Taylor with the guard. Now here's the same thing. See number 68, John Ayers? He is really assigned on pass protection to Lawrence Taylor. Did a good job in 81. <laughs> He's starting out the same way today. Huh? Can't do it much better than that. Second down and 10 49ers from the Giant 21. Clark swings in motion this time. Montana fakes the draw play. Steps up into the pocket, going for Clark, touchdown! playoff 49ers 7 Giants nothing 11 55 left to play in the first quarter as Ray Worshing gets set to kick off Kenny Hill is in the middle for the Giants flanked by Cephas and Mars Worshing lines it to Kenny Hill to the 25 the Giants will take over he's hit by Jeff Fuller now let's check the Giants offense. Sims the quarterback. Morrison Carpenter the runner. Ernest Gray and Bobby Johnson. Should start it might be Lionel Manuel. Up front the tight end is Moat. Then it's Roberts, Benson, Belcher, Godfrey and Nelson the offensive line. Young and big. With no playoff experience. That is in the offensive line. Galbraith starts in the backfield with Carpenter. Carpenter looking for a hole, cuts back over the middle. And the 49er defense led by Manu Tuiasasopo, the nose tackle, at whom you look. Lawrence Pillars and Dwayne Board are the defensive ends. The linebackers, Buns, Ellison, Reynolds, and Keena Turner. And the secondary, Hicks, Wright, Williamson, and Ronnie Lott at free safety. 49ers make wholesale defensive changes. They have nine defensive linemen, and they use them all. Fred Dean, no 
number 74 is lined up at left defensive end now. Michael Carter is the nose tackle. All this in motion as Sims goes back to throw. Outside Carpenter. Carpenter ran about a yard shy of a first down, it looks like. Ricky Ellison made the hit, a pickup of six. Zeke Moat with a good block. I think that was a big play for Carl Nelson, the starting right tackle of the Giants. His first pass protection here, he had to block against Fred Dean. He did a pretty good job. He was injured last week. You can see that rib pad there. See on the left side there? He tore a cartilage off the bone last week against the Rams. Practiced just a little this week, but he's starting now. Didn't practice at all yesterday. Worked for two days. That's Mullody in motion. The handoff is to Morris. He got the first down. Tui Asisopo again on the bottom of the pile. First down, Giants. Line of scrimmage is the 35, the Giant 35. The 49ers again make a lot of substitutions. They must have in mind that the Giants are going to throw on first down. Well, you know, the interesting thing that uh, Bill Walsh was saying yesterday is the reason he likes to do it early in the game is so he has fresh guys in the fourth quarter. Ernest Gray and Bobby Johnson are the Giant wide receivers. The handoff is to Morris. Oh. Morris cuts back for about four. Almost broke a big one. Tina Turner tripped him up. Tina Turner got in the backfield somehow there, and had he not been there, as you said, that would have been a big play for the Giants. I think what they were doing was running against the 49ers pass defense defense. Watch this here, and we'll see right in here. Tina Turner just dives right there and just gets a piece of Joe Morris. Other than that, there was a pretty good hole. He had a run of 61 yards last week against the Rams. Call back. Sims has the pass deflected. Almost intercepted it is by Ronnie Lott. Lott. The ball's alive. Ronnie Lott still on his feet. To the giant 13. Sims was hit just as he let it go. Giant 12, first and 10. They already lead 7 0. Here is that strange formation again where Paris is lined up in the balance line and they go in that direction. Roger Craig, the ball carrier. The 49ers in 1984 in compiling their 15 and 1 record outscored their opponents in the first quarter 110 to 29 and keep in mind that in the first six minutes in the first meeting between these two teams they jumped ahead 21 nothing right it's not 110 anymore it's 117 now right. and about to be more it looks like second and seven from the nine. Francis touchdown. Turnover that set the whole thing up. This is how it all started. Now watch Sims as he throws 
here. The ball is tipped right there. That's going to be tipped again off Ricky Ellison's helmet and back. Ronnie Lott sees it, dives for it, isn't down then, picks it up and returns it. Then the offense comes in, and they're almost surgical the way they attack it. Watch Russ Francis here. He just runs a short post straight up the middle. Montana sees it. Wham! He says, hey, that's another touchdown. That Red ball, special. by the way, that was tipped first, tipped twice, actually, was hit first by Dan Bunn. Then Ellison hit it. Bill Parcells, the giant head coach, of course, is very much aware of the 49ers' sudden striking power. And it's something I think he had a, a pretty logical and reasonable approach to, to counteracting if it did happen. Well, you know, he, I think last night when we talked to him, I had the feeling that he anticipated this kind of start. Because he said he told his team that all week. They could very well do it. But now we have to get into street fight. Kenny Hill will start from the four. Bangs outside, gets to about the 22. Jeff Fuller led the 49ers special teams. Good coverage. Touchdown again. One thing that has really helped this 49er team and Joe Montana, of course, with all his ability, is the that offensive line. You can see that he can just stand back there. There's not anyone close, so he can not only stand back and see, but he can just step up and unload that ball, as he did there to Russ Francis. Well, they've been together so long, all except Bubba Paris, the left tackle. And he's just a great big good tackle. Ernest Gray is wide to the left. Manual to the right as Galbraith swings in motion again. Sims back to throw on first down. Outside Carpenter. Carpenter out to about the 27. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Joe Montana over on the 49er sideline. Off to a great start. Five-yard gain on that play. Giants get it out to their own 28. 49ers leading 14-0. I'll tell you, Fred Dean is one guy that the Giants are aware of, Pat, on that last play. They double-teamed him on pass protection with the tackle, Carl Nelson, and the tight end, Zeke Moat. Dean is number 74, lined up on the left side this time. They come right at him. To not much avail, Morris fighting for yardage. Got about four. Dwight Hicks made the stop. Usually tight ends talk about linebackers. When we talked to Zeke Mowat yesterday, the only thing he talked about blocking was Fred Dean. He said, I've never blocked a guy that big and that strong. He said, I usually block linebackers. He said, this is going to be a tough thing. They lined Dean up on the tight end, as you saw. You know, another thing uh, Moat was saying, he's not used to blocking a guy down in a three-point stance. Uh, there's always been a linebacker it's up there with you know, two-point stance. Third and one. Sims out of the shotgun. Here comes Dean. Sims is going to scramble and get the, got the first down. Very aware of where he needed to be. Dean was almost there. Well, we saw him against Moat. He was on the left side. Now he goes to the right defensive side. You see, 74, he can play out wide. He's going against William Roberts. But he plays out wide, makes you step out. Then when Robert steps out, he goes crap, and he takes that inside on him. Bill Sims knew where that first down was, and he knew what to do after he got that first down. Get down. And we got to get going. What he just told his team. Sims going to throw on first down, comes out of the pocket, gets it to Morris. Pickup of about seven. Jack Reynolds took him down. a little bit. I was just going to say, Jack Reynolds, he's a starting inside linebacker for the 49ers. He doesn't play much of the game because he's always substituted for on pass defense, but ever since Jack Reynolds has been in the league, he can do this one thing. He can tackle. He can hit. He can unload, and Joe Morris just found that out. And ever since he's been here, I think the 49ers have had a better defense. Pitches back to Morris. Morris trying to get to the outside. Carlton Williamson, a loss of one. Usually on a sweep, the guy that's responsible for the force on that side is usually the strong safety. That was Carlton Williamson on that one. Got up into the backfield. Watch him. He'll come up on this left-hand side right here. We'll see him now, 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 now. Here he comes, whap, off the block of Tony Galbraith and makes the tackle. 
That'll bring up a third and four situation for the Giants. They're at their own 41, and Sims goes back into the spread. Here come the Niners. Sims had to throw in a hurry in the direction of Ernest Gray. It's incomplete. Heavy pressure by San Francisco. Sims is upset with his two receivers. Well, he should be upset with them because they were both in the same area. He had, he had both Ernest Gray and Lionel Manuel both out here. Now watch him. One should get deep. I think Manuel was supposed to get deep. Here there was Hicks on a blitz. But right now, Sims knew what was wrong. He had two guys in the same area. Dave Jennings back to punt. Daniel McLemore back deep for San Francisco. He returned one against the Giants in the first meeting. Good kick by Jennings. the first man down. McLemore slipped him. We've got a face mask violation, it looks like. Against Pete Shaw, perhaps. A 38-yard punt. Five-yard return as McLemore slipped away from Taylor. And now we have a face mask violation against the Giants. I think against Pete Shaw that's going to be walked off against them. Boy, Lawrence Taylor was flying down the field on that one, wasn't he? That was a good news. He had to run that far to miss the tackle. That's a frustrating deal. Just looking back uh, in the direction of where the line of scrimmage was, John, there's we another flag foul. down. We have a low block on number 86, San Francisco, and we have a face mask on the end of the run. It's a double foul. After change of possession, the ball will be put in play where possession changed. Fouls will offset. Gene Barth with a lot of airtime. Watch Lawrence Taylor here. He's being double, but he gets an outside release. Here comes Dwight Hicks. He gets another bump on him, tries to knock him out of bounds. Derek Harmon should get him again. He doesn't. Lawrence Taylor goes through all that, does all that work, double team, gets down there and misses it. Now let's watch the face mask right here. That's Pete Shaw. You see his left hand? Right there. They caught him. So after all that, that discussion and everything, the score is still 14 nothing. The last three days here in the Bay Area have been foggy. Almost all of every morning. And it's foggy again today. Really foggy on the Giants' side of the field. Here's that formation again. And here's Wendell Tyler again. Cut down this time by Curtis McGriff. I'll tell you, Bubba Paris, who is normally the left tackle, who plays right tackle, you see why it's unbalanced? Look, here's one lineman, here's the regular tackle, and here's the third tackle. That's Bubba Paris. Now watch the block that he makes on the play as they run to that side. It doesn't make... Now, back here on this side, this is a tight end and a guard. See, so all the strength is over there. But watch the outside guy, Bubba Paris, normally the left tackle. Look at the block that he made on Curtis McGriff. That's a takedown. That's a popper. A loss of one after all that. Here's Roger Craig wide open over on the left side. Terry Kennard hustling over to knock him out of bounds short of a first down. Curtis McGriff was shaken up a little bit, number 76 there, who plays the run about as well as anybody in the league. Well, they say that he's the best two-gap player in the NFL. And now what a two-gap means is, is that you can play on a guy, play that hole, plus the hole to the outside and the hole to the inside. Now you got a big big like that. You know, you got to weigh about 280 pounds like the grip does, and you usually cover two holes sometimes. He's big enough for three gaps or two holes. Here's Craig trying to get to the outside, cut down short of the first down. George Martin was in the game. Lawrence Taylor made the stop after Martin made him change directions. I think that's a big thing for the Giants right now. I think Bill Parcells can tell his team, okay, that's it. You know, we talked about the early lead, the way they do it. I told you that after they do that, they kind of settle down a little. There they did it right then. Now let's us go to work. We'll see. I don't know. That is Max Runniger, the ex-Eagle, back to punt for the 49ers, and Lionel Manuel retreating for the Giants. Good punt by Runniger. Manuel starts from the 20, shakes away from one tackler, gets out to about the 28. Todd Schell. 49ers number one draft choice who is excellent on special teams was the man who was down there. 
48-yard punt by Max Reniger, an 8-yard return, so they net 40. The 49ers lead the Giants 14-0. Schmitzen at that meeting. Snow or no snow? No, none. I want Schmitzen at that meeting. Snow or no snow? Boulder? I want Schmitzen at that meeting. Snow or no snow? Beetlemeyer? You know who to call when you have to get a package there. But what do you do when you have to get a person there? No matter how crazy the weather, you drive a Subaru. Or you may get stuck with something else. Who has intelligence? Powerful sound and moves with ease. Only RCA. Introducing the ultimate VCR. It's easily portable. It's intelligent, so you can select by remote control exactly what you want to record right from your TV screen. And it has powerful VHS hi-fi sound that's superior to any audio cassette. The ultimate VCR. Only. Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Pat Summerall and John Madden. NFC Divisional Playoff. 49ers leading 14-0. Sims fakes to Carpenter, rolls behind Benson. Gets rid of the ball. Tended for Moat. Sims just didn't have quite enough room as Lawrence Pillars was putting the heat on. I think that's what it was. Pillars, who is the starting guy at left end, we'll see him against Carl Nelson. There he starts on Joe Morris, is who he's playing against. And then he just gets off that. The lineman tried to cut him, and he was right in Phil Sims's face. He's got a great big nickname, Dr. Evil. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Evil. You, know, you put doctor in front of something, then it always sounds pretty good after that. You know, Dr. Skunk. Dr. Anything is okay. <laughs> the handoff is to Morris behind Benson again. Cut down just short of the 30-yard line by Dwayne Ford. And Jack Reynolds. Hacksaw, number 64. Hacksaw and his pencils and his homework. He's got a whole garage full of notes that he's taken over the years of the NFL, of game plans and whatever. And then he just comes out on Sunday and does the hitting. He, you know, you look at a Hacksaw, he has the ideal eyes and looks and name for a linebacker. You don't think of a studious guy. He's probably one of the most studious players in the league. Here come the 49ers showing your blitz. Sims is back in the spread. They do blitz. Sims does get rid of it. But he's hit just as he throws. Intended for Galbraith. And Sims is hurting just a bit. They got some people on him. Well, if they don't get Fred Dean blocked, Sims is going to be hurting more and more as this game goes on. Watch Dean, he's on the outside again against Robert. This time, instead of trying to come in underneath him, he just gets outside and just keeps going on that thing. You see, it? just as Sims was throwing, Fred Dean got him from behind. Jennings back to punt. McLemore back deep for the 49. Jennings gets off a rocket. McLemore with a fair catch and signal. He was looking at Larry Flowers, who was down in a hurry. 42-yard punt, no return. So that's the net, 42, 14-0, 49ers. No matter what unexpected problem should arise, Transamerica Property, Casualty, and Life Insurance can be there to protect you. Hey, you big ape! Who's going to pay for this mess? Trans-America. The 49ers against the Giants. Divisional playoff game. And the 49ers, as they have done almost every week, breaking on top. They lead 14 to nothing. Clark split wide to the left. Solomon to the right. It's first down, and Montana will go to work to Solomon. And get him for a first down at about the... 45-yard line. 17. They got on that play. Now watch how, how far Kenny Daniel is playing off of Freddie Solomon. Terry Kennard is inside. They have him double, but they're both deep. 
And what happens is Solomon comes inside towards Kennard, but he gets in front of both of them. I think if you're going to double a guy, maybe one guy shorter and one guy deeper or a bump would be a better than both of them off deep. Montana back to throw again. Giants blitzing. He gets it out to Craig. Craig has not got a bounce by Andy Hedden, but he got eight. Maybe a little bit closer to nine. 108 left to play in the first quarter. The 49ers can really move it. Watch what Lawrence Taylor does here. They, he's faking a blitz. He's going to run in and try and pick off number 77, Bubba Paris, and the guard, and then Leonard Marshall, number 70, can come around him. That's the stunt that they want to use today to offset errors coming out and blocking Taylor. On second down, it's Tyler around the corner. First down, 49ers. At about the giant 43 before Kenny Daniel and Terry Kennard. You know, Kenny Daniel made the statement after the New Orleans game, the last game of the regular season for the Giants, and last week after the Rams, when he came in and replaced Haynes, the all-pro cornerback, that nobody had really worked on him. Nobody picked on him. He kept waiting, and nobody came in his direction. The 49ers have uh, rectified that situation. Yeah, and I think he knew last night that, that was going to change. He said the other team, he said New Orleans then, he said the Rams then. He said, but I just have a feeling that these guys uh, might take a look over there. Now he is looking at Ronaldo Nimaya. Montana looking in the other direction. In it for Clark, intercepted by Lawrence Taylor. He got the rebound. Terry Kennard. The ball bounced off Kennard, intended for Clark, and Taylor came up with it. It looked like, right now, as we see it, and what, Clark, and what Montana sees, it looks like Clark is open. Look, again, good pass protection. There it goes through Clark's hands, through Kennard's hands, and then Lawrence Taylor, Gary Reasons. It's I, Reasons, it's not Taylor. Number 55, Gary Reasons came up with the interception. It is again, off Clark, off Kennard, into Reasons, interception. Robert in motion, and Carpenter gets nothing. Over the left side, hit by Tuiasa Sopo. There's a nose tackle for you, Mano Tuiasa Sopo. And that name, see, you have to be a big guy to have a name like that. Because if you were a little guy, Tuiasa Sopo, the name across your back would come down underneath your armpits. So guys like Tui Asasopa that have a lot of letters in their name usually play nose tackle. And as you say, they have to be pretty brought back. Second down. And 10. Albert again in motion. Sims back to throw. 49ers chase him. Sims comes out of the pocket. Gets it to Zeke Moat, who makes a diving, one-handed stab. White Hicks stop Moat. Pass was complete. A good catch. We remember Zeke Moat as a free agent blocking tight end. Now he's a receiver. This week, the 49ers were saying, the guy we have to stop is Zeke Moat on the Giants. Watch Sims. He's getting a big pass rush right here. He steps up, comes out to the right, thinks he's going to run, sees a defender there, gives him a stiff arm, gets the ball off to Moat. That's not a bad deal. Now watch this one-handed catch. Left hand, and back into the right. I tell you, those scuba gloves helped on that play. It's about a yard shy of a first down for the Giants. We'll be back with quarter number two. Watch, just as he does it, he gets it hit from straight ahead, gets knocked back, and then he trips. Someone trips on top of him. Look at that. Three red guys just hanging over him. Here's what happened to Moad on third and short a few plays ago. I can't see anything that happened to him there, but it did look like there was something with his with his hip. That's Dwight Hicks just getting up. Sims is seven out of eleven, has hit four in a row, picked up 50 yards. Dwight Hicks. They really would miss him sorely if he can't continue. I wonder if they would put Ronnie Lott back at corner. Well, I don't have to wonder too long. We're going to see right now. Back at corner, Ronnie Lott. Tom Homo goes to.
to the safety position for the 49ers. Sims back to throw. Bobby Johnson. It's good. It's a catch. 11-yard gain. Ronnie Lott. They went right to work. That's not a bad place to do it. You know, Ronnie Lott is a corner that likes to keep everything in front of him. He's a very physical corner. He's a real hitter, and he doesn't like to get up tight on someone. That time he gave way too much of a cushion on that play to Bobby Johnson, and Johnson took advantage of it. But Lott has always liked to keep everything in front of him. First down, Giants. Lott right up on the line of scrimmage. Hand off is Damaris, and he lost one or two. Ricky Ellison again made the hit. They're working on Dwight Hicks over on the sideline. I think what happened on that play, and the play that he got hurt, his own man just fell on him. Let's see if we can see it. It's right there at the top of the screen. You see him coming on a blitz. Now he starts to go down. You see his own man, that was Fred Dean, fell on him on one side, Tina Turner on the other side. He was sandwiched between two of his own guys. On second 11, Sims will try to throw. Get from the 49er. Dina Turner, Milt McCall, and Mike Walter, number 99, all there on the 49er blitz. The first guy is number 99, Mike Walter. Now, he's the guy that makes Sims put the ball down. Watch here. You see, Trent said, there's 99 there. You see, that made him stop, and then Milt McCall was right there, the next guy to gobble him up. But it's that first guy that breaks through on you. You know, then that makes him bring the ball down, and now he's not a passer anymore. Mike Walter, who had a hip pointer, might have re-aggravated whatever was wrong with him, if that was the case. McCall was credited with the sack. Sims out of the spread. Those 49ers look like they're coming again. Chicago incomplete. It would not have been nearly enough for a first down, but it is all the time Sims had. He couldn't wait any longer. Dean was all over him. Well, it wouldn't have been a first down, but it would have made this field goal attempt a little shorter for Ali Haji Sheik. been a good year 17 out of 33 but you know in the last month he's been kicking a lot better three for three last week against the Rams this will be from 46 yards out with Jeff Rutledge holding Ali Haji Sheik early in the year he really had his problems but as you say the last month hasn't been bad yards away. Number six, Ali Haji Sheik puts the Giants on the scoreboard. The 49ers lead is cut to 14-3. There's a time in life for the young to say, I want something. Monday at 3 o'clock Eastern time on CBS Sports, Purdue and Virginia. Two exciting offensive teams, the Lockhorns in Atlanta. And of course on New Year's Day at 1.30 Eastern time, Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie will play his final game for Boston College against Southwest Conference champion Houston. That, of course, is in the Cotton Bowl right here on CBS. Right now, we're at Candlestick Park in San Francisco as Carl Monroe. The point that starts from his own 10 is hammered shy of the 20. Elvis Patterson, Kenny Hill down there very quickly, along with Frank Cephas. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the 49ers, and now they have the first 25 plays scripted. You can see now that they're starting the 18th play, but look at the first 10 plays. The first 10 plays that they had 14 points. You know, now that part of the script was pretty good. And then, the, then they had a punt after three, and then they had an interception. So the script's kind of slipping down a little here. Maybe it got wet. Renato Nehemiah and Dwight Clark are split wide to the right for San Francisco. Montana's looking in that direction. Hit by Kennard. First down, 49ers. That was an interesting thing. Joe Montana came back with the same pass to the same guy doing the same thing that he just had intercepted on the last series. Watch him here. It's Dwight Clark coming. He'll come into the left of the screen, and he'll hook here right in front of us. 
see Montana look to the outside, came back to Clark right there in front of Terry Kennard. That's the same place he threw the last time for an interception. That's confidence, huh? Clark's fourth reception, the fake, chased by Taylor. Montana ducked under it, the first sack. If he didn't duck, he might be on IR right now. I don't know if Taylor even hit him on that play. I think Joe Montana, you talk about a dominant player. Lawrence Taylor is a dominant player. Russ Francis is supposed to block him. He runs right by him. Now, Joe Montana knows that he's coming. He can feel him coming. He says, no, nah, you can come. You can come free, but you're not going to knock me down. I'll just dip under you. He did club him with his arm as he went by. Montana went down wisely, second and 18. Receivers for the 49ers this time. Again, Montana is chasing down he goes. Casey Merrill on the rush this time. Two sacks in a row for the Giants, and the 49ers are going backwards. You know, Casey Merrill plays on the same side as Taylor, and I think that really helps. I think Merrill helps Taylor. I think Taylor helps Merrill. Because everyone is so concerned with Taylor blocking that Merrill can sometimes come free. Now watch Taylor come inside. Watch Merrill go to the outside. You see there's one, two, three guys on Lawrence Taylor, one guy on Casey Merrill, so he goes left and gets a sack. And brings up a situation that is third and 25 for the 49ers. Merrill 19. Montana back to throw. Has a man open. It's Clark. Got some breathing room as Clark is knocked out of bounds by Bill Currier, but Runniger will have to come on one more time. Dwight Hicks. Heading for the locker room. The word we have is that he has sprained his ankle, his right ankle, and he's going in to be retaped. Runniger will punt from his own 19. Lionel Manuel goes back deep for the Giants. 49ers leading 14 3. Runniger gets off a great kick. Manuel back to his own 18. Straight up the field with Lionel Manuel hit and hammered and knocked backwards. Really hit. Guy McIntyre. Really wallop. There goes Hicks through the tunnel back into the locker room. Flag is down on the play. A 48-yard punt by Runniger. 11-yard return. It's going to be against the Giants, so they'll start from deep, deep in their own territory. Block in the back. Number 57 during the run back. 10 yard penalty, first down. Fire and Hunt is number 57. Giants first and 10, they'll start from their own 15. I wonder if he was the guy that was trying to block Mike Walter on that play. But watch Manuel, he starts up, and was right there. Oh, did he take a whap there by McIntyre? 14-3. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Introducing the new fuel-injected Tech 4 engine for 1985 S10. 10% more horsepower and 22% more torque than last year's standard engine. So bring on the work, bring on the play. You got the guts, go all the way. And now, Chevy's made it possible for dealers to pass along special factory incentives on selected S10s with a Tech 4 engine. Nothing works like a Chevy. Chevy truck. He's a brother. There is Dwight Hicks. Just a minute ago, when he got to the 49er locker room, the door was locked. He couldn't get in. Then they got it open. And so Hicks is going in to have his right ankle retaped. It doesn't look like he's going to play anymore. You know, a lot of times they may want to take an x ray, too, before they tape it, or they want to get him in the locker room so they can take his shoes and socks and all the other tape off to look at it. Morris goes in motion to the right. Sims goes back to throw, and the 49ers again put the rush on. Pass caught by Moat. Big Zeke has the first down outside the 30 to the 33. Tom Homo made the stop. 18-yard gain. Sims to Moat. And the 49ers strong safety, Carl Williamson, was hanging right on Moat. That's why you need that big 240, 250-pound tight end. Watch him right here. There's Carlton Williamson there, but Moat is so big that he can just push up, get that ball, and just have guys fly off his body. Hand off to Morris over the right side. Morris still on his feet. 
Morris hammers outside the 45 to the 47. Carlton Williamson tackled him, but it's another giant first down. See, now Bill Parcells can stay over there and he'll say, see, I told you, they're going to get those first runs. We can get some pass protection, get a little run blocking, break something loose here, hit the tight end, get Joe Morris loose, make some big plays, and then in the second half, we can really come back on them. First down Giants. They started at their own 15. They're now at their own 46. Some breathing room. Sims goes back to throw. The 49ers blitz again, but they get it out to Carpenter. Carpenter into 49er territory. A gain of six. Milk McCall on the tackle. I think what the Giants are doing now is smart. You know, you can say, well, why don't they throw deeper? Why don't they throw more to the outside receivers? Well, one, he doesn't have time to. And two, I haven't seen them open yet. And as Bill Parcells was saying last night, he said, we're going to have the same approach we had last week. He said, we're going to nickel and dime them, then we're going to look for our shots and take some long shots somewhere during the game. Tony Galbraith in the backfield now with Carpenter. There's the long shot to Manuel. Knocked away by, it's intended for Bobby Johnson, I beg your pardon, not Manuel. And it was Eric Wright who was back there with him. is holding his back. Well, that's what he was talking about, taking a shot. You nickel and dime him, you hit the tight end, you hit the fullback, then you get Bobby Johnson out there. Looks like Eric Wright had his hand on him there earlier. I don't know that that ball couldn't have been caught. That's about as well as you can throw it. Bill Sims had good protection, good time on that. That was a pretty good call. They caught him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Eric Wright seems to be okay. Johnson's put wide to the right this time. Manual to the left. Gray moves in motion. 49ers on a blitz again. They get it out to Galbraith. Not a first down. He couldn't get away from Tom Homo. And the Giants will have to punt. Let's watch Fuller on the blitz now. What they do is they want to get a big push. But watch the blitz that they get here. Plus the addition of the rest of the linemen coming. And I'll tell you, Sims has to get rid of the ball quickly. You see Fuller comes from the outside. He's not blocked, but that's what made Sims rush and have to get rid of that ball before he wanted to. Here's Jennings. A good high kick in the direction of McLemore. They let it bounce, and it dies. The 49ers will have to operate from their own four-yard line. Pete Shaw was down to down it. A 43-yard punt by Jennings that just died inside the 49er five at the four. 14-3. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. 10-yard gain wiped out. Holding number 81 offense. Still second down. Maybe that's why Carl Banks was uh, waving at him. Let's look. Here it is right here. Here's Banks 58 on Russ Francis. Now he he holds Francis there, and then Francis has his arm around. That's why Banks couldn't get to him. I don't know about that play, though. I mean, it looks like he held him, and then Francis, in trying to get off, got his arm behind him. Tough call. Second and nine. Montana from his own end zone. Has some time. Picked off by Harry Carson. Carson to the inside the five. Carson touchdown. <laughs> Intended for Dwight Clark. The Giants are back in it. Harry Carson might not be back in it. I think he's on the bottom of that pile. He may not be able to breathe. Gary Carson, he gets up shaking his head. What did I do? I'll tell you, you know, the offensive players aren't good defensive players. They don't tackle very well, but Harry looked like he had a few moves on that yeah. thing. Pretty good run. That's the first touchdown of his NFL career. I'll tell you, he's been a good one. You know, he's known as a, as a run player. Very tough, big, strong guy. Hard hitting. 
Running backs don't like running in there against them. I don't know the quarterbacks ever thought about throwing against them. Haji she gets the extra point. And the ball game is a little bit more entertaining. Not to Bill Walsh, perhaps. Here it is. You know, it's always tough throwing out of here because any penalty is two points. Any interception can be a touchdown. I don't think he saw Harry Carson. He was looking for Dwight Clark. Harry Carson was the second defensive guy in there. Doesn't look like those guys wanted to tackle him much either, did it? Roger Craig made a, a shuffle at him. Let's see if Montana wanted to hit him. Uh, it was too late. By, by the time he figured out what happened, he was already in the end zone. A 14-yard touchdown with an interception by Harry Carson. 14-10 the score now. Had a recent wine taste. Watching that interception again. Here's Lawrence Taylor. Here's the corner. They're working out in here. Dwight Clark is going to run a hook. Now, I think Montana was key in here, seeing here. The guy he didn't look at was right here, Harry Carson. He comes right back in here and picks the ball off there. Watch it. We see Taylor goes to the outside. Now he starts to hook. I don't think Montana ever saw Carson, the second guy incoming, and I don't think Roger Craig wanted to tackle Carson. That was a poor effort there by number 33, Roger Craig. Of course, he's an offensive guy. Right. Maybe that's why he's playing offense. A good tackle, maybe be a linebacker. Ali Haji Sheik's kickoff goes to Carl Monroe at his own 10, and he's got it on. The alley is closed quickly. Robbie Jones down to make the hit. The 49ers take over at their own 27-yard line. Tomorrow, the NFL today, and then the divisional playoff at RFK Stadium in Washington. The Bears and the Redskins, and that ought to be a dandy. That place will really be rocking tomorrow. This one is today. 49ers lead has been cut to four to give to Craig. Craig shakes away from Banks and is hammered by Terry Kennard and some help from Jim Burton arrives very quickly. Kenny Daniel also got a part of the hit. Well, Carl Banks is having trouble over there on that left side trying to tackle Roger Craig. The first time, I guess he was he was held by Russ Francis. That time, I think he just missed Craig. Or Craig Bates missed him. But he's still mad. He's just he's shaking there. Son of a gun. Do it again. Let me get that thing right. Second and eight. 49ers at their own 29. Fighting the turnover. Something they haven't done all year long. That's Tyler in motion. The pitch is back one more time to Craig. Roger Craig hammers up very close to a 49er first down. It's close. George Martin on the tackle. Those turnovers eventually will get you. 49ers get a first down. Look at the takeaway. Ratios. The 49ers in the NFC were the leaders. Plus 16. But now today, the San Francisco miscues and the results. A field goal and a touchdown. And those that count for the giant points. Left to play in the first half. San Francisco 14, Giants 10. Montana to Tyler. Maybe one. Jim Burt, who's had an outstanding year as the no man, nose man made the stop. Well, the guy blocking him is not bad either. Fred Quillen, the center there, is going to be in the Pro Bowl. This is a pretty good matchup in the pitch. You see, Burt wants to get up underneath. Get underneath his shoulder pads and control him. Just hold him there. Don't take a side. Don't go right. Don't go left. Hold him there until the ball comes to you. And here comes Wendell Tyler. Burt goes, whap, just wraps him right around. Gary Reason's got a big piece of that tackle, too. Second down and seven. 49ers at their own 40. Montana to Solomon. Got it. And a penalty marker down as Courier hit Solomon with a little too much enthusiasm. Courier hit Solomon, I think, out of bounds. I think that's what the penalty's going to be. A late hit out of bounds, 15 yards down. Freddie Solomon 
is a big play man of this 49er offense. He gets a big play here. There's a hold. He gets a big play here, not only from the catch, but the penalty. I don't know. Now, that looked pretty close to me. I don't really think that that was a cheap shot. Here comes Lawrence Taylor. Watch him. He rolls right into Montana just as he throws the ball. Lucky Montana didn't get an injured knee out of that hit. Yeah, I don't know that that what Furrier did was an illegal hit. I don't know that Solomon it was. Solomon was on the sidelines. He was coming and just hit him. I don't think that was a late hit. First and ten, they go with two tight ends. Montana looking for Solomon. He's got him. Touchdown, 49ers. Harry Williams on the cover. The 49ers strike back quickly. When the 49ers run fake, he comes running up, and that opens the whole thing up. A lot of lines here. Just watch those safeties. Watch the deep one. Here comes Kennard. You see him? He thinks it's a run. He's way up. He goes, whoa! By, by the time he gets turned around, Freddie Solomon's in the end zone. That play fake worked against the safety. Got them both. Mike Dicker was watching that one. He's going to be on here at halftime. He's sitting someplace watching this game. He was watching that play fake. Was Mike's Bears. We'll play the Redskins tomorrow. Wershing's kickoff goes to Kenny Hill at the six. Out of the pack is Kenny Hill. Still on his feet is Hill. Chased and finally caught in 49er territory by Dana McLemore. Great kickoff return by Hill. 51 yards. And the Giants are right back in business. And a great tackle by Dana McLemore. McLemore was the guy that broke the touchdown punt return against him last time but watch Kenny Hill on this one he gets good blocking up there forces through a tackle good wall right there runs through a tackle there good balance the kicker's not going to tackle him you know that here comes McLemore he was the only guy and he gets him down Giants start from the 49er 42 Sims back to throw to Carpenter who is hammered by Carlton Williamson. A painful couple of yards. One yard, they say, from Carpenter. You know, I think that's what the 49ers are doing. They're hanging in there. Their short guys are hanging a little shorter because of what the Giants did last week to the Rams. They're defending that little nickel and dime stuff. The 49ers, of course, have the reputation of being a finesse team. But they'll hit you. Second and nine for Sim. Intended for Bobby Johnson. And as I said, they'll hit you. That was Ronnie Lott. That play, what Ronnie Lott did there, was what they started in 1981. And I think they're the best team of professional football at doing that, is getting there just at the same time the ball arrives and knocking it out. I think this is a new way. When they put in a new rule, this is how you had to play pass defense. Just as a ball gets there, whack that guy in the back and get it knocked out of there because you can't bump him after five yards. That was well described as a whap. Sims out of the spread. 
49ers with a lot of people up front, and here they come again. And Johnson, incomplete. Eric Wright back there with him. We'll see the blitz and the pressure on Sims. They had the right thing. They picked it up pretty good. They have one-on-one -on -one out here, but they just couldn't beat Eric Wright. That was pretty good pickup of the blitz, though. They had everybody covered. Dave Jennings has kicked well today, aiming for the right corner. Another good high kick by Jennings. Flag is down. Two flags are down. Ball is out of bounds by Jennings at about the 49 or 9. 32-yard punt, but a good punt. Receiving team. Marcel, I don't think, has made up his mind yet whether he wants to accept the penalty or not. 49ers had 12 men on the field, so it would be just a five yard penalty. They'd move it. It would be short of a first down by a couple of yards. Let's see what they decide. Make it fourth and four. Well, man on the field, defense, penalty refused. Yeah, I don't know about that though, because that would have put him at the 35 yard line. I don't know, because that could have given him a field goal opportunity. It would have been about a 52 yard field goal had they taken that penalty. I don't know. The Sheik could certainly get it there. 21 10, the 49ers have it. Our sinker painters of progressive ribs have a unique style of jawing. Howard says jazz musicians talk funny. And after a gig, I finger pop with a light beer from Miller. After playing, Howard enjoys a light beer. Light is super cool and a breeze on the calories you dig. Light is less filling with a third less calories than a regular beer. And the taste, Howard? Oh, man, it's Obop Shaban. It's lay down, break down, birdie on the hot side of town. He likes it. You see what happened to the 49ers? You see they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys. No, they had 11 up here. I just counted. They have 11 guys up here. I missed one and one back. So they had 12 guys on the field. They one, two, three, four, five. Anyway, and then one deep. So they had 12 guys out there. But I was a little surprised that, that they maybe they did think about it. But had they taken the five-yard penalty, they could have come back, take back the punt, and kick the field goal. Or field goal. Tried from 52 yards out, 258 left in the first half. And the 49ers again going right to work. It's for Nehemiah. Daniel chasing, he's out of bounds and dropped it anyway. I'll tell you, that's one that they talked about. They wanted to come in here, and they said, let's put Ronaldo Nehemiah in there. He's the guy that, that they always do send deep. That wasn't a bad move of his body, but he got his hands in too close to his shoulder pads. I don't think that would have been good anyway. No, he would have been out of bounds. But he can run. Second down, 49ers. Second and 10 from their own nine. 21-10 the score. The 49ers leading. Montana back to throw again. Out to Craig. Craig has it. Has some breathing room. Is cut down about three yards short of a first down, it looks like, by Bill Courier and Kenny Daniel. And Kenny Daniel's getting a lot of work today. You know, he played in the USFL here for the Oakland Invaders. This game today is his 40th game of the year. I tell you, that guy's been in a lot of huddles this year. 40 games in one year is unheard of. But we asked him last night if he was tired or felt any wear and tear on his legs because of the 40 games. And he just said, no, no, I've been lifting weights. But he has to turn up his dial a lot, he said. There is Mike Ditka, the head coach of the Chicago Bears, watching back in Arlington, Virginia. Good luck tomorrow, Mike. Mike looks like he's ready to play right now. Like he's ready to play in about an hour. He usually is. <laughs> No cast on him or anything. He'll be on the NFL today with Brent live. 
And Brett and Terry will take a look back. Terry Bradshaw, that is, take a look back at what transpired here in the first half. It's been a busy first half. Here's that ready list from Bill Walsh that we've been talking about from time to time. He scripts the plays, the first 25, and there's a lot of information on that on that sheet. You see what all those boxes are? Those are different situations. So, like, you'll have first and 10, second and long, second and normal, third down, third and long, third and short, goal line, all those different situations. And all those plays, you just look at it, pick one out, so let's try this one. Third and two. Montana chased by McGriff. That's not much of a race. Montana has the first down. He stops the clock with 2.34 left to play, a gain of 11 for Joe Montana. You know, I think this play shows one of the things that makes Montana so good is that he has quickness. You see, we can see him outrun McGriff here, but that little quick feet. You know, turning the ball upfield, a little speed there, and then getting out of bounds. That's one thing. You can put Montana in trouble, but with his quickness, he can get out of trouble, find time, and still make big plays on you. Got the great feet. First and 10 at their own 28 for the 49ers. On first down, he goes to work. Solomon. Solomon out of bounds by Courier. Solomon never saw that ball coming. I'll tell you, Solomon didn't see it coming because he couldn't have seen it coming because Kenny Daniel was in front of him and Daniel didn't see it coming. Watch Daniel. That ball's going to zip right by his ear hole. Look, he's turned like this. Here's Freddie. Now, now what? Daniel doesn't see it. The ball goes right behind his head. Freddie couldn't see it. Says, here it is. I'll go out the back door. He caught that ball in self-defense. That's how good a throw it was by Joe Montana. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Solomon has caught four passes for 94 yards and one of the touchdowns. 21-10, 49ers. It's only a dream at first. The Niners have three timeouts remaining. The Giants have two remaining. We have two minutes remaining in the first half with San Francisco leading 21-10. Regular season meeting between these two. The 49ers won 31 to 10. Mike Wilson is the man in motion as Montana retreats. Knocked away at the last second. Intended for Earl Cooper. Terry Kennard made the good recovery. I think that's what Terry Kennard has to do. He has to be more concerned with a passing game. Get, you know, you know, helping those corners, helping Perry Williams and Kenny Daniel out, staying back there, don't worry about the run, and do things like this. You know, get all over the field, knocking balls down. Don't worry about the run. Don't get caught by a play fake. Don't get up in there. We don't need you in there, they can say. We need you back deep where Montana can hurt you. Second and 10 for the 49ers from the giant 45. Solomon is split wide to the right. The handoff is to Tyler. Tyler is bent back by Gary Reasons. Underneath was Casey Merrill. George Martin was underneath, too. I think he was down on the ground, and he lifted his legs. So Roger Craig had to jump over some stuff there. Wendell Tyler comes out. Russ Francis comes in. have Earl Cooper and Russ Francis, two tight ends lined up to the right side. Montana goes back to throw. Chase and down. Lawrence Taylor and George Martin. Well, I'll tell you one that John Ayers didn't get him that time. Well, Lawrence Taylor, he's talking to that official. New York timeout. New York second timeout. I think Lawrence Taylor thought that the official called a penalty on him when he wanted to time out. But watch him come. Here's Lawrence Taylor out here. Here's John Ayers here. He'll come out and try and block him here. Taylor just gets right by him. Watch here. 68. He starts to slide out there. Taylor just dips that left shoulder and gets right by him and gets the pressure on Montana. You know, Montana can't see to that left, but he sure can feel to that left pretty good. A reminder that next Saturday, many of you will see the Wolfpack of North Carolina State tangle with the Wildcats of Kentucky off to a slow start. That's in NCAA basketball. 
And those of you out west will see a Pac-10 showdown between Oregon State and Washington. And in a special edition of CBS Sports Saturday, many of the nation's top college football players will take part in the 60th annual East-West Shrine Game. That's all next Saturday on CBS Sports. Max Runniger. Back to Boston. A little bit off the side of his foot. Manuel lets it bounce and lets it roll out of bounds. They're about the 12. 39-yard punt by Runniger. Turned out to be a pretty good effort. There's one thing you don't see often is a punter trying to get in a fight. I think no. he got hit late. Watch him. Here he comes, number four. Those aren't the most physical guys. Oh, see, here comes Elvis Patterson. He hits him. He says, what do you do that for? Then he gave him a little rap. That's a, that's a punter's little rap, that push there. These guys are getting violent out there. Yeah. Trying to stop the, the violence from punters. <laughs> we do? Sims out of the spread. Ernest Gray and Lionel Manuel to the right. The handoff is to Galbert. Tony gets out to about the 20-yard line. Jeff Stover is the man who made the stop. A minute left to play in the first half as the Giants take their last timeout, I believe. No, this is 49er timeout. So they have two left. The Giants have one. I think with the 49ers see that the Giants, because of the poor field position here, are just trying to run out the clock. Bill Walsh is thinking, well, if they're going to try and run out the clock, let's just try and stop them and then use our timeouts, maybe go for a punt block, but get the ball back and take one more shot at them before this half is over. Still a minute to go. Again, Gene Barth is the referee reminds you again that tomorrow here on cbs it begins with the nfl today live at 12 eastern time then the chicago bears make a visit to robert f kennedy stadium in washington the home of the redskins okay that's a tough place to play the home of the redskins playing the redskins there eh? i mean there is a good football team big strong you know riggins theisman art bunk had a great year good defense and I think excellent coaching with Joe Gibbs and his staff. A minute left to play at Candlestick Park. Sends a gift just to Galbraith. And Galbraith is hit by Fred Dean, but gets a giant first down. Well, of course, that'll be a, a big first down for the Giants because now the 49ers can't take any time out. Now the Giants are going without a huddle. They're going to take the shot here. 39 seconds left on the game on the halftime clock. Sims goes down. He gets it out to Galbraith. They're going to say it's incomplete. He was down and in the grasp of Fred Dean. Sims should be happy that he was in the grasp. You know, when you're down to 35 seconds, you're down 21 to 10. You don't have to try. If you get the trap here, see Fred Dean coming here. They have him here. Just take the sack. Don't do anything silly now. I think the Giants should just run out the clock going at halftime and, and uh, you know, get situated, get things straightened out, come back and play. It looks like uh, that's what they had in mind until they got that first down. And then they changed their mind. 17 seconds left, now 16. And he goes out of the spread, now he hands to Tony Galbraith again. And Galbraith gets out to about the 30. Shy of the first down, but that should take care of half number one here at Candlestick Park. 49ers, the NFC playoff game, go to the locker room, leading the Giants by the score of 21 to 10. Another half to go. The 49ers, the best record in football at 15 and 1, are on their way again. It remains foggy in the city by the bay. Fog is starting to lift just a little bit, but it's still very overcast. You're looking at Candlestick Park, the home of the 49ers. 21-10, the Niners lead. Here's the halftime statistical picture. 14 first downs for the 49ers to eight for the Giants. Giants had the ball more. Three turnovers. One by the Giants, two by the 49ers. For those two by the 49ers, and the Giants wouldn't have scored yet because they got those two turnovers, and that was 10 points. Gary Carson scored scored one with a touchdown, and then 
the, they got a field goal off the other interception. Kenny Hill, who had a big 51-yard run back just before halftime, will try it again. This time he'll come from his own six-yard line. Into the pack at about the 24. Blanchard Montgomery was the first man to hit him. 49ers have really improved on special teams. A couple of years ago, that was not one of their strong points. Even Super Bowl year, it wasn't. But now it is. I think they have that type of team now. You know, we talked about the nine defensive linemen they have. They they all play. I think they're drafting people to just do one thing. Just be a third down play or a second down, first down, short yard, a special team. That's the way this team is put together. Sims goes back to throw on first down. He has some time. Ernest Gray had it and lost it. A ball that perhaps could have been caught. Eric Wright was the defender. Well, this is what the 49ers have done so well. You know, this type of thing that you can't hit the guy before the ball gets there. So you see what Eric Wright does. You just stay with him, stay with him. Now, right after the ball gets there, right when he gets there, you go in and you hit the guy from behind in the shoulders and try and knock the ball out. They do that better than any team in the NFL. And that's the coaching point, I would think. Well, it has, you know, because they've been doing it for four years now. Culbert, the man in motion. Draw play to Carpenter. No running room for Carpenter. They maybe got a yard. So, you know, Fred Dean, who we'll see here, usually gets outside, comes up the field. He has a pass rush move. He starts to do it to Roberts there, but then he sees it's a run, so he caves back in, and he still gets in in a tackle. He thought he was tackling the ball carrier when he was tackling the left guard, Brad Benson. See that? They say he can't play the run. <laughs> he did that pretty well. You don't know who guys are. You just kind of sort them out there and keep the guy with the ball. Find a leg. Sims out of the spread. 49ers showing blitz. They only rush four. Sims is hit just as his arms started forward. The Giants get on the ball. It looked to me as if his arm was started forward already. Jeff Stover applied the heat. They're still all locked up. William Roberts down there. Jeff Stover. Geez, we did all that work. Here's Jeff Stover, a natural pass rusher. Didn't play college football. He was a shot putter at the University of Oregon. Got a tryout here with the 49ers, and from day one, he was just a natural pass rusher. Looked to me like he had that ball, though. 6'5", 275 is Stover. Jennings back to punt. This one, not his best. McLemore from his own 41. There's got to be a flag on that play. It's got to be a violation against Carlton Williamson. He pushed somebody in the back as McLemore caught the ball. He knew it, it, it happened right in the in front of the official and everyone. I think it was Eric Wright. Mm -hmm. He was right down there. And he Illegal block in the back. Number 21 receiving team on the run back. 10-yard penalty, first down. He knew it because when you put your hands on your hips and walk off like that, that means you're guilty. That means you're guilty. You did it. No doubt about it. Here it is. We'll see it on the right side of the picture right here. You see, he started, and then he committed himself at the guy, and then by the time he got there, he was behind him, and he knew it, and there's nothing you can do. You can't stop yourself in space. The only thing you can do is cover up your head. <laughs> After you take your hands off your hips. 13 out of 19 for Montana. 49ers first possession of the second half, and he goes right to work. Right. Russ Francis on the hop. Incomplete. Both, and both officials from the side come in. They both said no. I don't know if Russ was smiling that he thought he fooled him or smiling that he thought he had it. it looked like he had it to me. From this side it did. Second and ten from the 33. That's why I was smiling. He said I had it. How can I say I didn't have it? <laughs> I guess you can smile and say other things. 
Rogers. Montana is chased. He gets it out to Craig, who dropped it. Incomplete. Taylor, again around the corner, got away from Ayers. You know, the last two times they played the, the playoff game in 1981, in the first game this year, the 49ers had successful blocking Lawrence Taylor with John Ayers. Now today, it looks like Taylor is ready for that. And what he's doing, instead of trying to give a move to Ayers, he's just, he's just bashing right into him and driving Ayers back into Montana. He's getting his shoulders up underneath Ayers. Third and 10. Tyler started in motion, looked like he might have been in motion. Montana's gonna be chased by Marshall, and that's no race. Montana's still going. They thought he was going out of bounds. Montana. Chased by Courier, knocked out of bounds, finally, inside the 20. when we talk about the 49ers, we see them over there still working on 
Lawrence Taylor. In fact, they're putting the ice bag now on the on the right knee, and they then they'll probably put some sponge on it, and then they'll put some uh, you know an ace bandage around it, get some pressure on it. The word is he has a bruised knee and will return as Joe Morris gets very close to a first down. They're putting a sponge over Lawrence Taylor's knee. He got tangled up with Joe Montana's spikes on his shoes. The Giants are about a foot short of a first down. It looked right at the end of that play that they did get tangled up and tripped a little. I think that's what happened when Taylor had his foot planted. Well, you're talking about two pieces of valuable merchandise when you talk about Lawrence Taylor and Joe Montana. What the trainer's doing there is he's making a donut to cover the bruise. Then they'll put tape over it and get him back in the game the next series. Third and short. They give us to Morris. It's a giant first down. Ricky Ellison on the tackle. He's the leading 49er tackle on the season. Ten, yeah, I think, excuse me, John. 10.43 left third quarter. I was just thinking that, you know, you talk about the 49ers, you hear about the 49ers, you think so much offense, but I've really been impressed with this defense. The way they play and, and, and hit and cover and, and play so many guys, the substitutions, nine defensive linemen, they play about seven linebackers, the secondary play in different positions, they're really impressive. Sims to throw, pump fake, or to try to throw. He's down in the hands of Blaine Ford. The fourth sack of Sims by the 49er defense. I'll tell you, William Roberts, the left tackle for the Giants, is having a problem over here. He's had Fred Dean, and we've seen Fred Dean beat him a couple times. Now he's going against Dwayne Ford. He just didn't get his feet moving. He had his feet in the ground, and he tried to do it with his hands. Then he got his arm around him. If you're going to block a guy like Ford, you have to get those feet moving. You can't be have your feet planted in the ground, I don't think. If you remember, he also had a problem with Jeff Stover. He's got Dean this time. Morris, a sweep to the right. Got up to about the 43. Tom Homo made the stop. White Hicks has not returned. And on the other side of the field, they're working still on Lawrence Taylor. It's a bruised knee. Oh, that's why I would see the sponge and the donut then. Then the, the hole covers the bruise, and the sponge is on the outside. This is a situation the Giants really don't want to be in this third and long. You, know, you talk about them coming. This is when they really come. And now White Hicks is back. Playing free safety. Here is Sims. Look out, Phil. By Lionel Manuel. It is a catch. It is not a first down. It's like it's about a yard shy. Yard and a half, maybe. You know, Phil Sims is trying to talk Bill Parcells into going for it on fourth down. The that punt team started in, and he started to wave them off. And you saw, if you can read lips, Parcells saying, punt it, punt it. Sims wants to go. Quarterbacks always want to go, don't they? And the fans. The quarterbacks, the fans always want to go. Coaches and their parents don't want them to go. Marcel said he told his team during the week, we'll run the game, you play the game. McLemore signals fair catch at his own 14. Elvis Patterson was right down in his face. Here comes Lawrence Taylor limping back in. 30-yard punt, no return. It's still 21-10, third quarter. Styling, heart pounding performance. This is the performance LeBaron GTS. He rode to 50 Turbo GTS beats BMW 528E. In the slalom, GTS Premium is first again. Performance seats, available leather fitted cabin, advanced electronics, and a five year, 50,000 mile protection plan. LeBaron GTS, created to outperform Europe's best. It does, I assure you. unexpected problems should arise. Transamerica Property, Casualty, and Life Insurance can be there to protect you. Hey, you big ape! Who's gonna pay for this mess? Trans 
America. Insurance, finance, manufacturing, transportation, innovation. The power of the pyramid is working for you. San Francisco 21-10 over the Giants. NFC wild card game. NFC divisional championship game, I could say. The Giants are the wild card team. Pitches back to Roger Craig. Craig is hit down after a gain of about three by Carl Banks and Jim Bird again. You know, you wonder if the, the, when the 49ers are down in this area, they always seem to run to their right, and you wonder if they're running behind Keith Fawnhorst, Randy Cross, their two Pro Bowl offensive linemen, or if they're running at Carl Banks, or if they're running away from Lawrence Taylor, or all of the above. I think it all has something to do with it. Montana back to throw. Montana chased. Penalty marker goes down. It's Jim Burt who took him down. Fourth sack of Montana. It's a holding violation against the 49ers, I'm sure. This will be an interesting decision for the Giants because they did get the sack. They'll probably decline the penalty. See Harry Carson looking over at Bill Parcells to see if he can find out what his wishes are. Holding, number 71 offense, penalty refused. Third down. Number 71 is Keith Fawnhorst. You see him here. He's going against George Martin. Martin gets that hand up under. He throws that hand up underneath. Now, to me, that's not holding. I think Martin put his arm in that position. Oh, what the heck? Early in the in the engagement, it looked like Von Horst might have grabbed him by the base, base mask. Montana has Francis, and he drops it. He had it, but there, there you are, covering your head again. That was in the basket. That was in the basket. And that was one of those deals where he started to run before he caught the ball. And that's the worst mistake that you can make on third down. You know, sometimes on first down, but look, there's third down. He has the first down already. All he has to do is catch that ball. But you see when it went through is when he started to turn to his right, that ball went right through. Runniger, not a good kick. Manuel will feel it in 49 territory. Lionel Manuel slips. And it's down at the 40. Giants will take it over first and 10 at the 49 or 40. 34 yard punt by Runniger, seven yard return. So the Giants do have it in good shape with seven. A man pretending to be a woman? It's Blake Edwards' star studded smash comedy, Victor Victoria, with James Garner and Julie Andrews. Tuesday at a special time. The 49er defensive huddle, as we told you on the previous series. Dwight Hicks, who sprained his ankle in the first half, did come back, but he came back as a safety man. Now he's moving out to his corner spot. That's Eric Wright, who we're looking at number 21. But Lott is back at free safety, and here's Joe Morris sweeping right. Gets away from one tackler, only got about a yard. Carlton Williamson brought him down. It was Lawrence Pillars who had the shot at him in the backfield. You know, it's interesting, Pat, as you're saying, Dwight Hicks playing out there at corner again. On the other series, he was playing as a free safety and Lott out of corner, but as he was telling us yesterday, I think when they switched him to corner and Lott to safety, White Hicks really didn't like that switch. But he said, well, if we're going to do it, I want to do it all the time. And I bet he said the same thing in this game. If I'm going to play in championship games and maybe a Super Bowl as a corner, I want to play out there now, too. Second and nine. Sims back to throw. The 49ers on a blitz. Sims looking for Moa. Come down with it. Covered by Keena Turner, the linebacker. Batted it away at the last second. I think Phil Sims took too much off of that ball because Moat wasn't able to run away from Keena Turner. I don't know if he would be able anyway, although that ball was right in his hands, wasn't it? That just bounced right out of the gloves. Watch Keena Turner. You know, for years they said that he was the underrated player but now he's in the Pro Bowl this year. So you can't be underrated and be in the Pro Bowl. There can go over his head. That's good coverage from the very beginning of the play. 49ers blitzing again. Sims rolling right to get away from him. Hands it complete to Lionel Mann. 
Manuel. Manuel's inside the 20 to about the 17 or 18. Ronnie Lott made the stop. A gain of 20. Sims is limping now. A lot of pressure on Phil Sims. Not just game pressure either. No, but he zipped that ball in there that time to Lionel Manuel. And one thing about Manuel, you know, Dwight Hicks was saying that these guys come and they kind of lull you. You don't, you don't think they're right. And then they make a quick move away from you. You see what happened on that play? That was Ronnie Lott. He fell down, but then he was able to get up and still tackle Manuel. Giant first down at the San Francisco 19. Sims to Joe Moore. Hammered quickly by Lawrence Pillars. Pillars was right in his face. Dr. Evil did his evil. Well, it looked like Dr. Evil did the same thing to the Giants that the Giants did to the Rams in Crutchfield last week with Leonard Marshall. But he's going to start in here, and he's coming on a pinch move. You see, the guard blocks out. He just has a free hole to run in. He just slides right down the line. No one blocked him. Now, defensive linemen love that. When no one blocks him, they go like that. Second and 10. They're still at the 19. Here comes the 49ers blitz again. The Giants pick it up, and the 49ers pick it off. Ricky Ellison with the interception. Sims trying to go down the middle, has it picked off. He was trying to throw that ball to Rob Carpenter in the middle. It was really a force because I think Ricky Ellison had Carpenter all the way. Watch him. Here's Ellison, 50. Come across here, Carpenter stops. He didn't even keep running, and Sims led him. Ellison was standing there the whole time. That's something I don't think you can charge to Phil Sims. No, that's what you charge to miscommunication or whatever. Ricky Ellison charges that. Hey, that's a good play. What are you talking about? Communication. Montana on first down. Under pressure. Gets it to Craig. Craig is caught from behind by Carson. Belcher shaken up on the last play. The Giants center checking his neck. Well, he's had a full day. He's had a play against Mana Tui Asasopo, Michael Carter, Louis Kelcher. They just keep bringing those guys in on them all day. That's just part of their theme of defense. Keep them fresh for the fourth quarter. And they've done a great job of doing that. Here it's back to the top. Tyler hammers into the pile is stopped for no gain or very little. Leonard Marshall, the tackler. Francis involved in a shoving match with several Giants. That's Carl Banks. That's the one that's really upset. Started earlier and then it went and then it went on again and again. It'll be third down and four for the 49ers from their own 29. Four and a half minutes left to play third quarter. 49ers leading 21 10. Montana with lots of time this time. That'll be enough for a first down to Dwight Clark. Gain of six, they needed four. There's a guy who's proud of his interception. <clears throat> Look, he puts his name on it. Puts his name on it, said pick three. You know, they call interceptions picks sometimes. So it's his third pick, Ricky Ellison. He'll get that ball that he picked after the game because he puts the tape on it. We're going to play in the playground. We're going to play with Ricky Ellison's ball. Here's the fake to Craig. The rush by McGriff. The completion to Cooper. Cooper is hammered by Kenny Daniel and by Gary Reasons. Well, the fans had to wait a long time to do that. That's Earl Cooper's first reception today. And anytime he does anything, they give one of those yells, Ooh! You think they're booing, they're nothing to boo. They're just cheering for Earl Cooper. So it was interesting to uh, hear Bill Walsh talk about him yesterday. He had been drafted as a fullback out of Rice and 
changed into a tight end, and he thinks that next year he could be a Pro Bowl player. He says he has really developed, both as a blocker and as a receiver. Two tight end offense, including Cooper and Francis. Montana back. Over the head of Dwight Clark. Montana is down. Now getting back to his feet. Kenny Daniel, the defender. You know, you look at these quarterbacks, nice-looking guys, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, nice kid, and you don't think that they're really tough guys. But when they have to take these shots, look, unprotected, that one's not too bad, but it is a jolt when you hit the ground like that. But I'll tell you, these guys are tough guys because there's nothing they, they can do about it. They have to stand there, they have to throw, follow through, look down the field, and they still get those whacks after they throw it. Montana, 16 out of 27, three touchdowns and three interceptions. This is a third and sixth situation here from his own 39. Mike Wilson has come into the game. Montana has Mike Wilson open. And he hammers into giant territory, cross midfield before Andy Hedden brings him down. It was a gain of 13. Now, this is an underneath pattern. You see, what, what happens is Mike Wilson starts up now all the other receivers go deep, and he starts up. Then he comes in underneath on his own defense. It was Elvis Patterson, number 34, who was on the coverage from the beginning and made the tackle. 2.10 left in the third quarter now. 49er first down at the Giant 48. Mark is right. Lindell Tyler loses to Jim Burt. a flag coming flying out of nowhere as Francis and Banks get back into it again. Well, that that Francis Banks thing's been going on about four plays. Delay a game, number 26, five-yard penalty for spiking the ball while the clock was running. Oh, there's one you don't see called often. Against Lindell Tyler. Lindell Tyler saying, hey, we're getting a little picky out here, aren't we? to the 49ers 45 second down and 17 let's see what he did well there's the spike that they're talking about I guess you're supposed to just leave it there hand it to the official have a nice day Solomon wide to the left and Wilson wide to the right Montana gets it out to Wilson he gets back in giant territory Bill Furrier got him down it's about the giant 49, it looks like. Game of six, it'll be third and 11. You know, someone that could have used this guy here, this Mike Wilson, this year was the Dallas Cowboys. They had him in camp three years ago, waved him, picked him up, and he's been with the 49ers. I, I think had it not been, you know, for the years that Dwight Clark has had and Freddie Solomon, this guy would be a starter on a lot of teams. He's a good player. Sims trying to stay warm. Temperature at game time was 40 degrees, but it's very damp. Montana back. Under pressure, Montana finds Mike Wilson. First down. Gain of 18. He does that so well, does Montana. This is what separates Joe Montana from most other quarterbacks. He can do this type of thing, get by guys, now just buy time, just fight and still find someone else, here he finds Mike Wilson out there, hits him on the run, you see they keep working, because Joe Montana has done it, can do it, the receivers know it, they just keep working for him. 49er first down, and 32, Montana fakes, goes deep, intended for Solomon, and a little bit of miscommunication there as Kenny Daniel, number 24, was back deep with some help that time from Terry Kennard. That's the big thing, and that's the thing that we talked about at halftime. Because in the first half, on that same play fake, Terry Kennard came running up, down near to the backfield. That time, they went to play fake, Kennard stayed right back there, and they couldn't get Freddie Solomon. Second down and 10. The 49ers in this situation are very likely to not consider it a passing down. They just as soon run on second and ten. Throw. Here comes 
comes a courier blitz. The vision is to Cooper and Kennard is right there. Clock running, you can see, with seven seconds now left in the third quarter. Kennard is limping back. A loss of three on pass completion to Cooper. I think Kennard's getting a, uh, a Charlie horse there in that right, right leg is what's happening to him. But I tell you, that was the difference. You know, in the first half, he went for the play fake. And this half, I think they talked about it, and he didn't go for it. Let's see if we can watch it here. Now, here's Terry Kennard here. The 49ers are going to go play pass. Earlier, he had run up here. Now, this time, when he saw the play pass, Montana goes back. Instead of coming up here, he runs out this way, and he helps here on Freddie Solomon. Now, that's a different type of play. See the play fake here? Now he doesn't come up. He comes over and looks right now for Freddie Solomon. You see? And right there, they had the double, and Montana had to throw it away. So that's the end of the third quarter with a score 21-10 San Francisco. And we now pause for a word from your local station. The Niner Station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Pontiac. Cars built with a feel for the road. Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer. And less. Another quarter to go. The 49ers leading the Giants 21 to 10. This drive started at the 49ers own 22. They kept it 11 plays. Five minutes, 35 seconds have elapsed. And they have con converted successfully on three third down situations in this drive, and they face it again. Third and 14. Mike Clark, shy of the first down by about a yard. Perry Williams came up to make the stop. Well, Clark is upset with himself. He thought he read that thing perfectly, and he doesn't like the spot that he got. See, he was right there. He was watching that, that marker out there because we can see that the marker is right in front of where Clark catches the ball. Now, look, he just gets beyond it and catches it, moves the ball up there. Look, he's looking at the spot right now. He wants it right there. You see, now they move the marker out of there. Right there, he's going to be short. No, he was short. He was well short. They say now it's about a foot and a half, it looks like. 49ers are going to go for it. I think they gave Clark the advantage of the spot on that one. Wendell Tyler comes back in. Clark now has caught seven passes for 85 yards. four on attempts for the 49ers on fourth down when they've chosen to go for it. 60,303 in attendance. The second largest crowd in candlestick history. They're going to go. This is not one of the strengths of the 49ers. Offensive short yardage and goal line. Montana never did feel confident with that play. He looked confused in the huddle, kept looking to the sideline, got up to the line, didn't take, you can't take any chances with this one. So he took his time out and wants to talk it over with Bill Walsh. Recently, two American travelers dined at the Paris home of the famous chef, Anne Willen. The hostess, who founded Paris's La Varenne cooking school, served a special Chablis that had won first prize in a prestigious competition. The guests were complimentary. The bon. And when asked where the award-winning Chablis might be purchased... Anne, do you know where? The chef replied... Why, I should think just about any way you like. Chablis Blanc, from Ernest and Julio Gallo. All the best. When you're the chauffeur for kings, queens, and fair maidens, you need a magic wagon, Plymouth Voyager. There's room for the entire cast of the school play to ride in comfort. With the magic of front-wheel drive, it handles and parks like a car and has Plymouth's unbelievable protection. 
Voyager, the magic wagon. You've got to drive it to believe it. Plymouth Voyager. As you say, Montana never was really comfortable with this decision. Well, it looked like he didn't understand what the decision was. You see right there, I think he says you want to time out. So now he's looking at the defense. He doesn't like what he sees over there. He kept taking peeks at that defense. And he said, I better take a timeout. We'll talk about it. They talked about it. Decided to put in Ray Wershing and kick a field goal. From 39 yards out. Wershing is blocked. The Giants, Pete Shaw has it. Elvis Patterson blocked it. That's the decision they'll talk about after this game is over. Hey, Elvis Patterson came from the left side, and he just blew right free. Blew through there free. Got right around the corner. The kicker was down. Wershing was down. Watch on the right side of the screen. Here comes Elvis Patterson, 34. Watch him. He comes free, just lays out, and gets right in front of Ray Wershing. Pete Shaw picks it up. Bill Walsh, not happy with the result. Giants take over. 49ers lead by 11. You know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office, bingo. And once these fans recognize me, I probably won't even have to pay for my life here from Hiller. Down the truck! <laughs> I love them. These fans know I drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Good seats, huh? You're in the wrong shape, buddy. Come on. Oh! I must be in the front come on, row. Come on, come on. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Good seats, hey, buddy? He missed the tag! He missed the tag! What do a zipper company in Pennsylvania, a gear manufacturer in Michigan, and a nationwide shoe corporation have in common? They, like thousands of other businesses, have chosen IBM Business Computer Systems to control distribution, speed order processing, and turn out products smoothly. Whatever business you're in, whether you're in zippers, the gear business, or you run a shoe company, an IBM Business Computer System can help. Now here's the block, now here's Jeff Stover, 72. He has to block the inside guy here with his hand, plus he has to bump this guy. But this guy, Elvis Patterson, comes from the outside, doesn't get bumped, comes in here and blocks the kit. See now Stover, the outside guy, 72, he steps down. See, when he steps down, Patterson's right by him, and he gets the block right there. Watch the kicker, Ray Worsham. Watch what happens to Patterson after he makes the block. He goes and looks for the kicker, Knocks the kicker right into his car. <laughs> the kicker said, well, they didn't tell me about these things at kicking school. The kicker had two bells rung on that one. Some fraternity, that kicking fraternity. Sims goes right to work. That's Moat. Moat lunges close to a first down. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Moat slow getting up. Nine-yard gain, a little bit more than that. Moat's in pain. Well, you know, he's been in the last month of the Giants' season. He has really come along. He's always been a good blocker, but he's really developed as a receiver. Four receptions today for Moat. Oh, there's to Morris. Morris will get the first down. Not much more. Mike Walter on the stop. Ray Wershing, who took that double knock. They're counting his teeth, see if he got all that stuff in there that he left the bench with. Looking in there to see if he's still got his balance. Total offensive yards, the Giants 172, the 49ers 342. First and 10, Giants at their own 46. Lionel Manuel split wide to the left and Gurley to the right. They fake. Side to Morris. Morris scoots down the sideline, gets another first down. There at the 49 or 40, knocked out by Keena Turner. That was a heck of a play by Phil Sims there. You know, they talk about a quarterback touch. He really had a touch here because he was getting rushed. But he comes on a roll out here. Now he has to pull up and he has to get the ball over the defender to little Joe Morris. You know, he just kind of got up there and just looped it over there. 
just lobbed it over Ronnie Lott's head. That's a nice touch. What they call touch. He's got a touch like a sledgehammer. That's the difference between a thrower and a passer. Sends back. Gets it down the middle. Moat. Pass is incomplete. It was again intended for Morris. Jim Burt. You can tell he spent a long day in the trench. Well, you, you, he has a broken hand. One of those things. I was talking to him last week about Lawrence Taylor would throw the ball way high in the air and Burt would try and catch it. Well, heck, a guy like that. Look, his arms and shoulders are so big he can't even lift his arms over his head. He can't catch the ball. So I said, you, you, you'll never catch the ball. He said, well, it's my hand. I got a broken hand. Showed me the back, no knuckle. Then he showed me where it came through in the front. He's even got his gloves taped. Well, that's serious. Sims gets out of trouble for a minute. It's complete. That's Joe Morris. An 18-yard gain. Ronnie Lott was the defender. Okay, Phil Sims, two plays in a row, has made excellent throws. This one, I think he had to come out sidearm on it. The one before, he got it over the defense. Now watch him. He has to scramble here. I think this one, he has to get under the defense. Well, he just got right by the defense. Fred Dean fell down. Joe Morris is only listed at 5'8", but he grew to about 6'6", six, six right then. First down, Giants, 49er 22. Morris tried the right side. Keena Turner stopped him. You know, it was interesting yesterday, Bill Parcells was telling us that, you know, I want to be in the game in the fourth quarter. He said, I don't know that the 49ers have ever had any pressure on them in the fourth quarter this season. He I said, hope. they just blow out everyone early. He said, I hope we can wear them down. The Rams last week thought they would wear the Giants down. They, if the Giants get a touchdown here, then it's going to be a very interesting end of the fourth quarter. Sims coming back. Was in trouble. Tamoa complete. About the 12. Carlton Williamson with him. It looks like it might be a half yard or so short of first down. Sims under heavy pressure has been able to get away from a lot of it. Zeke Moat who says he's learned how to run pass patterns. Well, he said the thing is healthy. He went through a little slump in midseason. And he said he didn't know if he ever could catch. He said, but Phil Sims stayed with him. He said he worked with him after practice. He says, you can do it. I'm going to keep throwing it to you. He said, if Sims believes in me, heck, i got to believe in myself. Third and short. Mullity in motion. We do this to Morris, and he hammers for the first down for the Giants. One. Jack Reynolds made the hit. But they got the first down. That was a little different counter play. You know, usually when you have the fullback, Rob Carpenter, in short yardage, you expect him to get the ball. But they go a different action. They kind of turn towards Carpenter and then hand back to Morris, who does the diving. Jack Reynolds looked like he was surprised they handed it to Morris. He was looking for Carpenter. And here comes a little guy over the top. So it's first and 10 at the 11, just outside the 10. They can make a first down without scoring. Morris goes in motion to the left. Sims back to throw. Sims is hit from behind and hammered. He never saw it coming. Wayne Board and Jet Stover. Board 76 and Stover 72. about respect 
You talk about Montana and being a tough guy. How about this Phil Sims and the shots that he's been taking these last two weeks? Remember the Rams last week? You didn't hear this this week. Boom. Well, he's had he had so many years where he missed part or all of the season because of injuries. This is his first that he's been reasonably healthy all year long. And he's had a good year. Today has been a tough day. Third down. Gray shuffles in motion. Sims retreats and throws. Intended for Manuel Low. Again, he was hit just as he let it go by Fred Dean. Gary Johnson was there with Dean, and they'll go for the field goal. I think they really have to go for the field goal, although they're down by 11 points. But the pressure that they've been getting, they just can't keep doing this. If it was fourth and short, maybe they could go for it. But in this situation, fourth and long, I think they really have to kick the field goal. Now, you talk about pressure on a quarterback. That last series was pressure Ooh. on a quarterback. 33 yards, this one will be for Ali Haji Sheikh. He's already made one. Now that's wide right. The Giants come away empty. Pontiac Road Car Technology, Grand Am is a true driver's coupe. That means it's built for drivers who appreciate engineering excellence as well as exciting road machinery. You know who you are. Grand Am, new from Pontiac, only from Pontiac. We build excitement. Pontiac. Aha, there's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. <laughs> Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of thermal protection you can have. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning, our building product, put your house in the bank. on CBS. Don't forget the Peach Bowl is coming your way Monday at 3 o'clock Eastern on CBS Sports. Purdue and Virginia, the Lockhorns at the Peach Bowl in Atlanta and on New Year's Day at 1.30 Eastern time you'll see Doug Flutie in his final game for Boston College against Southwest Conference champion Houston. All of that here on CBS. And now on first down, let's see what the 49ers do. And their own 20. Randall Tyler. Maybe two. Lawrence Taylor. Gary Reason. Kenny Daniel. All involved. The 49ers have a little more than nine minutes left to go with an 11-point lead. This is where most of their runs start to come up. When they get into fourth quarter with the lead, they start to run. This year, they've run about as many times as they've passed doesn't mean it because when they really need it they pass and they run to eat up time in the clock. Solomon comes wide to the left. They look in that direction. Montana gets it out to Tyler who breaks away and gets a first down before he's dragged to the ground by Harry Carson. First down 49ers a pickup of 13. Well the Giants have to get the ball back and the one thing you can't do is miss tackle there. You see again Montana starts to look to the left, comes out here, watch Kenny Daniel, he comes up, misses the tackle. And allows another five yards. That other five yards got him the first down before Carson made the stop. Now let's see if they 
start that offensive series with their sweep again. Craig moves over. Throw it. Clark. Clark still on his feet. And again, it's Carson who hustles out there and brings him down, but it's another first down. You know, that was one of the few audibles that the 49ers used. I think they were going to run a sweep. And then Joe Montana looked out there to the right, and you see he sees the corner way off at Dwight Clark. So on first down, he just went red, said red. Now that made it a live audible. Then he just threw it out there to Clark for the first down. He looked out there. I think they were going to sweep to the left, and they audibleized to that out there to Clark. Clark has caught eight passes for 98 yards and the first touchdown of the day. The delay to Craig. Stopped by Leonard Marshall. Right back at the line of scrimmage, maybe a foot or two, but not much more than that. Well, you haven't heard much from Leonard Marshall today. Remember last week against the Rams, he had the big game, and uh, I think they've been doing a pretty good job over there on him today, Bubba Paris. Bubba Paris, they list at 295, but I think that's conservative. Well, Bill Walsh said he's 300 plus. He said. He could play best at 290, but it's 300 plus. Second down and 10. Here goes Solomon in motion. Montana back to throw. Throws quickly. Almost picked off. Bill Courier was close by. It was intended for Dwight Clark, but he never looked back. Well, remember earlier in the in the game in the first quarter, Bill Courier had one like that. And after he missed that first one, then the 49ers started to operate. But look, Dwight Clark was still in his move. He didn't even know the ball was thrown. He's still working zigs and zags and bumps and stuff. Third. Joe said, hey, Dwight, I don't have that much time. I mean, you give me fake right, fake left, fake right, fake left. I got to throw by then. 650 big down here for the 49ers and the Giants. They need the ball back. Montana was chased by Courier. Gets it to Tyler, and he got his first down. Tyler's still on his feet. He's at the giant 40. This is the type of thing that Montana can make. Watch here. We'll see Courier here. He's going to come on a blitz. Montana starts back, sees him, and runs right around the blitz. Watch, it's a safety blitz. Here comes Courier. Montana sees it. He just runs right around. And crap, hits Wendell Tyler for the first down. If this guy isn't the best quarterback in football, I don't know who is. Well, maybe someone say Marino. They might. Tyler ducks inside and picks up about five. Harry Carson on the stop. Here's Lawrence Taylor involved with a fracas. I don't know who it is. Dwight Clark, I think. No, it's John Frank. had Lawrence Taylor pinned. He had him pinned. Three, one, two, three. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. That John Frank is a rookie. Bill Walsh is saying this guy's always in fights because he always blocks guys and stays with them. He said he can just glue to you. And that's exactly what he did to Lawrence Taylor. Look, he just glued to him. Taylor has him. Frank gets a reversal. Taylor's going for the reversal. Frank gets a pin. Referee says that's it. No more. One, two, three, four. Hey, what? That should be broadcast on Saturday morning somewhere. I love that guy's jump from the ropes and stuff. That was a tag match. Derek Harmon, the ball carrier. Looks like mm -hmm. Bill Courier might be hurt, number 29. Block is running now with 5.15 left to play. 49ers clinging to that lead. And trying to get more. It looked like Courier, when he went to make the tackle, he's going to be right here. And it looks like he caught a, a, a knee. Looks like he just caught a knee right in the stomach as he goes to make the tackle. Watch it right here, right there. Maybe he caught that left knee right below the sternum. Derek Harmon was the ball carrier. Courier still down. 5.13 left to play. Bill 
Courier up and standing over in front of the giant bench now. Appears to be okay. Elvis Patterson has taken his place. Here's the hit. Looked like it was more of the, the jolt to the head and shoulders, but the knee could have just got him in the stomach in addition to that. Looks like he might be okay now. Third down and seven from the 37. The giant 37. Montana retreats. Clark is out of bounds. Not got a bounds by Perry Williams. Montana had to throw that ball while backing up. Casey Merrill was so upset because he was that close to Joe Montana. It was that close, and that's what's so frustrating for a defensive lineman. You run all that way to catch the guy, and just as you get there, just before you get there, watch him here. See, there's Merrill coming up the middle, and by the time he sees it, Montana's throwing that ball. Clark hadn't even turned when Montana threw it. But look what happens when it's there, right there for the first down. And his ninth catch of the day for 112 yards. That's Dwight Clark. John Frank is in the game as the 49ers go with two tight ends and send Wendell Tyler around the right side. Terry Kennard made the stop. Tyler went out of bounds. Ball was on the ground, but the officials say he was down and the clock continues to run. One thing we knew the Giants were going to do is anytime Wendell Tyler had the ball is try and knock it out, try and hit him, jar him, cause the fumble. I don't know why that's not a fumble. What, what, what did he do wrong? Now let's look at it again. It does Which, look like a fumble. I mean, he's inbounds. He gets hit the first time. He's not down. The ball comes out. I guess the ground caused it. The ground can't cause a fumble. Tyler looking for some place to go. Hammers down to about the mm -hmm. giant 15, 17 call it. Terry Kennard and Lawrence Taylor on the stop. Bill Walsh. You know, Bill Walsh has a term that he used yesterday, and I don't know exactly what it means, but I think it means something like, you know, you kind of just suck it up. He says you have to swallow hard sometimes. So you just call things and then you just swallow hard. That's coaching talk. I guess. But he used it about three times. We do this and we swallow hard. I'm sure fourth down, when he decided to not go for it, and kick, he swallowed hard then. Montana on a rollout, chased by George Martin, threw it in the direction of Roger Craig. Didn't get it there, and we're going to have a look again at Ray Worshing on a field goal attempt. Montana is the holder, by the way. Look, looks like he's having fun out there. You know, like you just play in the park. I mean, you run, you try and beat someone, and no big deal. Worshing always says to Montana, you saw him pat him on the shoulder. Before he kicks, he always says, help me, help me. He never looks up. Never he looks at the goalpost. From the time he leaves the bench, he won't look up. He's had one block. And this one's wide left. Will get a shot with 3:15 left to play. The 49ers leading 21 to 10. I think he tried to get rid of this ball before Patterson from the outside is coming. He may have been a little quick on this because the minute that he kicks it, he knows right then that that thing's no good. He had the one before block. He may have been looking a little at 34. Sat down with mom, talk to dad, can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon, because you really care. The services can help you so you not only get better, you really grow. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. They'll take the train and show you the way. You'll work hard to get decent pay in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Prove you can make it, prove it to all. Serving your country and walking tall in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You've got it together. They'll see in a glance, thanks to the services, you got the chance in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. Pontiac. The editors of Road and Track call the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the world's 12 best enthusiast cars. Car and driver call the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the 10 best cars of 1984. So why did we make it even better for 1985? Just because. The sensational 6000. Only from Pontiac. We build excitement. Pontiac. Summerall and John Madden at Candlestick Park. 
49ers didn't score. They missed the field goal. But they ran off six minutes and 28 seconds off the clock. Sims will go out of the spread formation. Gets it to Tony Galbraith. Out to about the 25, a pickup of about five. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Sims has gotten him to hurry up. Just over three minutes, they go without a huddle. Johnson will get the first down. Now the Giants can huddle up. They can get a play sent in from the sideline. But the thing is, with two minutes and 51 seconds, that's a lot of time if you only need one score. With a score 21 to 10, the Giants have to think now in terms of two scores. So you have to get one rather quickly, then work in the next one. Some time to look at the defense. They don't blitz. It's a four-man rush. Outside the Galbraith. Incomplete. That kind of play pass is not going to get it done. No, that's not the type of thing that they have to do. I mean, the only thing good about that pass is it was incomplete and stopped the clock. But I think that they have to think in terms now of getting chunks of 15, 20 yards. I don't think they have to throw it 70 yards. But they have to think in longer chunks to get that first one. Because you can't spend all the time getting the first one. The clock runs out. 246. It's stopped right now at that amount. Second and 10. He gives to Galbraith. A gain of about eight. Ronnie Lott. Fred Dean on the stop. I wonder about Ronnie Lott's shoulder on that one, though, Pat. He really... He really threw it in. Remember, he had that brace on there, and it's his right shoulder. I tell you, he's wearing bigger shoulder pads today, and he has that brace on him, but he really throws a shot in here with that shoulder. Watch it right here. Right at the end, he got it right on that right shoulder. McLemore is taking his place. Pass intended for Gray, and he couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. Ronnie Lott being attended to now. I think he, you know, they were giving him smelling salts there. Now, this is a fourth down play. Now, I don't know that they have to get the ball off the field. Now, they just have to get the first down. Then go back to work again. That's the concern. 2-11 now left to play. Sims out of the spread. Bobby Johnson complete out of bounds stops the clock 206 left to play Dana McLemore who replaced lot okay now that was a good play that that did two things one it got him the first down two it stopped the clock so now they get in one more play before the two-minute warning this is a good area to take a shot take a shot here before the two-minute warning well, they send gray to the right and the other group to the left 49ers beat the snap. That was Gary Big Hands Johnson who jumped off sides. And the Giants will pick up five because of that. Encroachment number 97 defense made contact before the snap by George Kennedy. That was Big Hands Johnson. I think that was more an encroachment. Watch him right here. I think he got a start all the way into that backfield. I always thought encroachment was just a neutral zone. Watch Big Hands. He got that left hand up, that right hand by. He was three steps before the ball was snapped. That was a serious encroach. That's offside. Look, he's still smiling about it. See, that wasn't encroachment. That was offside. Lionel Manuel and Gray off to the other side. 49ers are offside again. Sim. Ernest Gray is hammered. The ball comes loose. 49ers have it. There's a flag down at the beginning of the play, however. Jeff Fuller knocked the ball loose, and it came up with it. That'll be against the 49ers. That was a free play for Phil Sims. The 49ers were off sides. He knew he had it. That's a good time to go for it. 74 defense lined up in a neutral zone. Offside, five-yard penalty. That should be a first down. Let's watch it. Here's Fred Dean. They say, look at his hand right here. The 
say is over the ball, but I thought Dwayne Ford right here, I thought he jumped. Watch Fred Dean. He's offside. Watch the bottom guy here. He jumped. Now he's in there. So they had a double dipper on that one, I think. That was Dwayne Ford and Fred Dean. And now we get the two-minute warning of first down Giants. It's still 21-10. I have taken up 49ers 21 Giants 10 with a minute 55 left to play Sims longest pass today by the way was a 20 yard completion to Lionel Manuel 49ers have done a good job deep here is Alan spread again looking for some time gets it looks to Mullody Mullody never looked at him however and it's incomplete should have yelled at Mullody to turn around or something. He looked like, you know, you know, he is eligible. He can catch a pass. He looked like he thought he was a blocker, but there was no one out there to block. San Francisco Police Department standing by and security measures on their mind. Just like the Notre Dame backfield. Three horses. Three horses. Sims gets it out to Mullally this time. And he gets out of bounds and gets the giant first down. Knocked out by Dwight Higgs. That's probably what they told Tom Mullally in the huddle. He said, look, if they're not going to guard you, they're not going to watch you, I'll just send it and throw it out there to you and get a first down. Gain of 13. Sims limping just a little bit now. But again, with one minute, 44 seconds, I would think that they have to direct at least the first two into the end zone. Try and get that score, then the onside kick, then go for your second one. They have all of their timeouts remaining, by the way, in this NFC Divisional Championship game. Sims out of the spread. Going for Manuel. Ronnie Lott, the defender. Manuel had looked to the inside. Pass went to the outside, so did Lott. He's a strong-looking guy, and he—I tell you—he looks like a linebacker, and he and he plays like a linebacker more than a corner. And I think that's one of the things that really helped this secondary in this 49er team when they drafted Ronnie Lott, number one, is he brought a, a certain physicalness along with him, you know, gave him some toughness along with Jack Reynolds at the same time. That was when they changed. Mullody has it. Mullody hammered. Short of the first down, knocked out of bounds by Ronnie Lott. Looks like he's about a foot or a foot and a half short. Clock stops now with a minute 32 left to play. Zeke Moat must be injured, and that's why Tom Mullody is in here. They're not going with two tight ends. He's the only tight end in there. Again, he had run the out on the left side for a first down, and now this was a completion on the right side, and they're still inches short for third down. Sims is 24 out of 42 for 210 yards. He's had two intercepted. Third and short. Johnson. No good. He only got one foot down. Sims is coming over to say what happened. He only got one foot down. Good call, good call. That's either one official telling the other official, or it's a 49er sideline, but he only did get one foot down. He had the left foot, and he never got the right foot down. Here comes Moat back, limping a little bit. A fourth down, they're putting in Moat along with Morris and Carpenter, probably for a running play, Pat. Fourth and about a foot. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. A minute and 28 seconds left on the clock. Sims. Long counts it. I don't think he got the first down. I don't think he got it. No, sir.
behind Brad Benson and William Roberts. We see it looks like a little push there. He cuts back, and it's the nose tackle who's the first guy in there, but they really didn't get any movement. Watch your Bill Parcells. After you don't get it on fourth down, you don't need the headset anymore. And you don't need it, I don't think, in this game anymore. 49ers take over with a minute 24 left to play. This NFL Most Valuable Player segment is brought to you by IBM. 1973. Quarterback John Hadle's first season with the Rams is a productive one. The 12-year veteran throws 22 touchdown passes while leading Los Angeles to a first-place finish and a team record 12 victories. For his accomplishments, Hadle is named the league's most valuable player. You wouldn't have to say much about which sideline you're looking at if you were wondering which team is ahead. 49ers 21, Giants 17, Roger Craig is stopped over the right side by Jim Burton. The honorary captain for the 49er game today against the Giants on this playoff occasion was one of their outstanding players, the linebacker Matt Hazeltine. Played here 1955 through 1968, went to the Pro Bowl twice, 1963 and 65. Really, really a great player. He, he, he was a great player. I remember Matt at Cal. I followed him. I was a fan at Cal when he played there, and then I was a fan with him with the 49ers and old number 55. <laughs> he used to make a lot of plays. He sure did. Watching at home today is Matt Hazeltine. Wish him well. Tomorrow, the NFL Today will begin it at noon Eastern time, and it'll be followed by what should be some thundering contest. The Bears and that great defense of theirs against the Redskins and that great offensive line and their good defense and Joe Theismann, that's got all the elements. A second down, this is Tyler. Cuts back over the left side, not a first down. Lawrence Taylor tripped him up. Next Saturday, don't forget the doubleheader coming your way. Starts with NCAA basketball, North Carolina State against slow-starting Kentucky. Folks in the West will see Oregon State against Washington. It all starts at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific. And then don't forget, special edition of CBS Sports Saturday. The 60th annual East-West Shrine Game, which is played not far from here at Stanford Stadium. It'll be live, 3 o'clock Eastern time. A lot of players in this game, by the way, who played in the Shrine Game. Lawrence Taylor, Rob Carpenter, Joe Morris, Carl Nelson of the Giants, and Wendell Tyler, and Freddie Solomon, Fred Dean, Gary Johnson, Earl Cooper, just to mention a few for the 49ers. It's been a up and down but successful season for the Giants. Montana today, 25 out of 39, 309 yards, three interceptions, and 64 yards rushing in two carries. They'll let us know when it's over. To Craig, no first down. Giants swarm trying to carry him out of bounds, led by Casey Merrill. And now the Giants call a timeout with a minute and three left to play. You know, one good thing for the 49ers about playing on Saturday is you get to get your game over with. You win your game. Now, one night tonight, you can really celebrate. Really take it easy because you don't know who you're going to play next week anyway, and you can't get ready. You watch them tomorrow. The executive producer of the NFL on CBS, Terry O'Neill. Senior producer, Charles Milton III. Good to see Red Eye on the road. Directed by Sandy Grossman. Joan Vitrano, the associate's producer. Three. The Giants have got everybody up and nobody back. They run a 
Wagner back in punt formation. Nobody back there but the referee. Dead about the 30. The Giants with no timeouts remaining and 53 seconds left on the clock. A 40 yard punt by Runniger. John, you were talking about the excellent one good thing about playing on Saturday. Wonder if the fact that the Giants had to play in the wild card game last Sunday, had to stay out here all week and play a week later, or actually six days later, while the 49ers had the two weeks off in the rest period. Yeah, well, that's that's the difference between being, being 15 and one as the 49ers were, and nine and seven as the Giants were. I mean, that was the 49ers' reward for being 15 and one, and the Giants' door because they were nine and seven. Sims with time. Tony Goldberg hammered by Todd Shell. 49ers high draft choice. Mike Walter also part of it. They really like Todd Shell. Well, they think that, you know, they've used him on special situations this year. I think when he becomes a starter, he'll really be something. Sims is hammered by Fred Dean, and this time it's Dean who stays down, and now Sims falls over him and sits on him. Fred Dean is probably staying down because he's tired. It's been a long day for him. I will say one thing, though, about the 49ers. The I really ball. felt San Francisco ball. I really thought in the second half they looked a lot fresher. They're giving the 49ers the ball on this. They said it's not an incomplete pass. It was a fumble. They said as, as he was hit, as Fred Dean hit Sim, they called that a fumble. But the rule is if his arm's going forward, then it's an incomplete pass. I guess the referee thought that his arm wasn't going forward, that Fred Dean knocked it forward. point it's academic see as he gets hit i guess that is a fumble huh? i think it is he yeah. was starting to draw it back but his arm had not started forward i don't think so the 49ers now on a spot to just run it out i'm sure is exactly what they'll do with 22 seconds left on the clock and montana just bounces down bill parcells never happy when you lose but it's been a rather satisfying year for parcells i'm sure 